everybody, welcome back to the Medical Projects YouTube channel. If you are new around here, hello, my name is Olivia and I am a second year medical student at King's College London. And here on the Medical Projects YouTube channel, we create content for you every single week to assist you in getting that dream place at medical school. And I try and share my experience about what being a medical student is really like to hopefully make your application process that bit easier. So as it is interview season, we are concentrating on producing high yield videos to help you with your interviews. And for today's video, we are going to be discussing a topic which makes many applicants shiver because it is just not the nicest thing to encounter on your interview and that is performing in a role play station. If you're asked to break bad news in an interview it can be very intense and often the actors or actresses will be crying or be showing lots of emotion and it's just quite an uncomfortable experience. Secondly, we're not really used to breaking bad news in day-to-day -day life, especially not on the scale that you're expected to do as a doctor. So for today's video, I'm going to be offering my tips and bits of advice for how to break bad news, which hopefully you can apply to any scenario that you encounter on your interview day. So what kind of breaking bad news stations will you face? Unfortunately, it could be an infinite number of things and it might not even be a role play to do with breaking bad news, but breaking bad news is the one that students tend to find is the most uncomfortable to do and is the most challenging one to do. So there are many different examples of breaking bad news and this includes disclosing a difficult diagnosis, admitting to a mistake you have made and informing someone of the death of a loved one. I've also managed to coerce my flatmate into filming with me today and so we filmed an example of breaking bad news done really effectively and one done not so effectively and we're going to highlight the differences between the two of them. But before we go into our top tips for breaking bad news, let's show you the demonstration of how not to break bad news. Hi. Hi, hello. Hi. Hi, um, <clears throat> are you, uh, Olivia? Yeah, yeah. I'm Olivia, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Hi. N nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Um, uh, are you, what's, what's brought you in today? Um, so I'm assuming it's a follow-up because I had a recent biopsy on a mole on my back. Um, oh, yeah. and I was told, obviously, I'd get the results quite soon. So. Okay, yeah. Let me just, um, let me just have a look for yeah. you then. Um, yeah, it was on my on my left shoulder, and you know my dad noticed it was looking a yeah, bit funny. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, um, yeah. That mo that mole on your left shoulder. Okay. Yeah. Mm. I don't think I have anything to worry about mm. though. But I think the doctor just wanted to check it. Mm. Okay. Okay. So I've uh, yeah, I've got your results here. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So that mole, it's um, it's a malignant melanoma mole. So we're going to um, have to do what? What does that mean? Malign malignant? Oh, um, a malignant melan. Uh, so malignant uh, means that it's cancerous, um, and a melanoma is just the type of mole that it is. So I've we're going to have to look. I've at got cancer. Oh, sorry. Um, oh, yeah, no, that's fine. So I, I've got, I've got cancer. Yes. Um, so what we'd look at doing now is we'd go on to um, some treatment options, potentially some chemo chemotherapy. I'm going to check the rest of your um, your scans just to make sure it hasn't metastasized. Um, what? Metastasized? Oh, okay. So, um, <clears throat> so it hasn't metastasized to different sites in your body. Um, so it hasn't it hasn't moved. We don't want the cancer to have, like spread. It's a huge shock. Mm. I I, well, I wasn't even expecting this. I I've had older family members with skin cancer, but obviously I'm I'm only twenty three. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, I guess uh, skin cancer can sort of come at any time in life. There's no sort of guarantee because, you know, cells are continuing to grow and divide and, and, and mutate and my toes. So, you you know, um, there are a number of risk factors and age is one of them, but, but otherwise it might just be, you know, part and parcel of um, just bad luck, really. Oh, my gosh. Mm. I can't believe this. Mm. There were so many points to pick up on in this scenario, but in order to do that, let's go through my top tips and we can discuss what she did particularly poorly in this station. So this scenario revolves around a 23 year old woman who was played by me, who discovered a slightly interesting looking mole on her back, 
Didn't really think anything of it, but went to the GP to get it biopsied, which is basically where we check to see if the mole is cancerous or if there's anything a bit sinister going on there, or if it's just benign. And in this scenario, she receives the very unfortunate diagnosis that this was indeed a malignant melanoma, which is basically skin cancer. The first thing to pick up on is that the doctor didn't even really look up, didn't introduce herself, and she also didn't ask for the patient's details. So if you're faced with a role play scenario where you're playing the role of a healthcare professional, this is absolutely absolutely pivotal to do because how do you know you're breaking bad news to the right person and it would be the most unfortunate disaster if you were to give a crushing diagnosis like in this scenario to the wrong person. Furthermore, the doctor doesn't really check whether the patient understands what is really going on. As a medical student and doctor, we need to be really careful not to assume that the patient understands what their diagnosis even entails or what the condition they have entails. We need to assess the level of understanding that the patient has before we even go into the bad news. And the reason we like to check for understanding is just to kind of ease the patient into it. It would be very unfair to talk to a patient about a cancer diagnosis when they had absolutely no idea that they had anything wrong with them. So of course it is very important that we deliver the news and it's to the point and we're honest about it, but it's always a nice idea to check their level of understanding before you proceed. The next thing you will have hopefully picked up on in this scenario is that the doctor, played by Lizzie, kind of avoids eye contact. She's fiddling with an iPad, she's looking around, and she's not really looking into the patient's eyes, especially when delivering the diagnosis. And that is a really bad thing to do. You should avoid trying to look around the room because it makes the patient feel very uncomfortable. And of course, this is a moment they are going to remember for the rest of their lives. So they need that trust between you and the patient. I think when breaking bad news, it's a good idea to kind of nod along with the patient, be very calm, and try and keep open body language. Often when you're breaking bad news, especially in an interview, you're going to be very nervous and you're going to want to fiddle with your sleeves or look around and it is very uncomfortable. But I think by maintaining that open body language and maintaining that eye contact with the patient, it shows that you're really engaging with them and it shows that you're taking this very seriously. The next thing that this doctor did very poorly in this example was she made use of medical jargon. And you know, that might be all right if your patient is a doctor or they understand what's going on. But in this scenario, it was highly inappropriate the patient was very confused and you don't want to deliver a diagnosis that they don't understand. Of course, to add to this point, you need to assess who you are breaking bad news to. You're not going to use the same sort of language to a younger child as you would to an elderly person or to a patient who works within the healthcare profession. You need to be mindful of this and assess who you are breaking the bad news to. The next thing you'll hopefully have picked up on is that Lizzie, the doctor, kept speaking over the patient. When it comes to breaking bad news, again, a nervous habit that a lot of people adopt is kind of speaking to fill the gap. And that is something that you should really try to avoid doing. It can often feel really unnatural pausing and having those silences. And I understand that it can feel uncomfortable, but that is something that is really important to do when you deliver a upsetting diagnosis as it gives the patient time to digest the information that you've just presented to them. So on your interview day, you might have a patient that bursts into tears. And so of course, there's no point continuing the conversation until the patient is a bit more composed. And finally, the doctor didn't really seem very empathetic, she didn't check if there was anything that needed clarifying, and overall just seemed extremely distracted. During the scenario, her phone even went off. And this is something really important to pick up on because when you are breaking bad news, you need to make sure that this is going to be in a private setting and you're not going to be interrupted. So now we know not how to break bad news. Here is a better example of how to approach a breaking bad news station if you happen to get one in your interview. Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, my name's Elizabeth. I'm a medical student. Oh, okay, great. Um, and I'm going to be talking to you about some of the tests that you've had recently. Yeah, I had a recent biopsy. Yeah. So before we start, can I just confirm what your name and date of birth is? Yeah, sure. Um, it's Olivia Parkinson and my date of birth is the 9th of May, 97. Okay. Well, it's nice to meet you, Olivia. Is it okay if I call you Olivia? Yeah, of course. Okay, brilliant. So you said you came in, you had a biopsy. Yeah, so I was, I I have a mole on my kind of left shoulder blade region um, and I was wearing like a bardo top one day and my dad said, you know, have you noticed your mole is looking a bit funny on your back? Um, and of course, because I can't really check my back that often, I just didn't think anything of it. Mm. Um, but then I did notice in the mirror it was looking a bit funny, so I, I came to the GP and she suggested we get a biopsy done. So okay. yeah. And, and what can you tell me, what do you know about a biopsy? Yeah, so I think she said it was just to check if it's healthy, and I'm sure it will be, because obviously I'm only 23, and mm -hmm. I just, you know, never had any problems with my health before. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just to double check it, make sure mm -hmm. it's all right. 
And, and you said it's to check if you're healthy. Do you know anything else that a biopsy might look for? Um, well, I mean, a lot of my family members, a couple of my family members have had skin cancer, so I suppose it's kind of to check, make sure it's not that, but they were way older, so, you know. So, um, Olivia, we have, we've done the test results of your mole, um, and I'm really sorry to say, unfortunately, it has come back as a cancerous mole. Oh my goodness. But I'm only 23. How can I, I didn't even, I didn't even think of, Oh my god. I'm really sorry. I can see that this is something that's really difficult. Am I going to die from it? So with with these moles, there are um, a number of tests and investigations that we still need to do. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we will go through those. Um, someone might remove the mole. Okay. Um, but we just need to check that that the, the cancer hasn't spread to anywhere else in your body. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we want to make sure that it's it's isolated there. And if it is, then we can we can look at how we remove and work on from that. So there yeah. are a number of steps. Okay. So it's it's not. I'm not sure what's going to happen next. Basically, at this point. Yeah. We can't we can't say what's going to happen next. Yeah. Um. And I know that today is probably a really difficult thing to hear. So it's probably very hard to take in. Um, and the next steps will be discussed with you later on, okay? So okay. at the moment, that's that's all that we know at the moment. Yeah. God, this has all come as a massive shock. Mm. Thank you. Thanks, Doctor. I think I understand. But I think I'd just like some time to think about it, if that's okay. Of course, yeah. Do you have any, do you have any questions for me? Um, not really at this time, I don't think. But am I able to contact you if I do? Yes, of course, yeah. Um, you have my email address. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, you can contact me for any, any further questions that you might need. Okay, so I really hope you were able to identify the key differences between these two roleplay scenarios. In this scenario, the doctor firstly introduced herself and checked the name and date of birth of the patient, which is something that is really important to be doing. She also assessed the level of understanding that the patient already had in order to identify how she was going to proceed. She used lay terms with the patient to make the diagnosis very clear and gave the patient an opportunity to digest the information. She also used lots of phrases like, I can see this is very difficult for you, or this must have come as a shock. And this is a really nice thing to do to show that you are really empathizing with the very difficult situation that the patient finds themselves in. She did not talk over the patient. And a very nice thing that Lizzie did at the end was she asked if the patient had any concerns or if there was anything further that she needed clarifying. And this is a really important thing to do to again, make sure that the patient is leaving that room understanding exactly what you've just told them. I think it should be very obvious which is the correct way to approach these role play scenarios, but I really hope that you can take away some of the tips that I've said to you today. Remember to try and remain calm and implement some of the techniques I've spoken to you about today, and you should be absolutely fine if you do find yourself in the position where you're asked to break some form of bad news. Let us know if you have any other role play scenarios you would like us to act out. It was a lot of fun to do this video today, and I really hope you found this useful. Please make sure you subscribe subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already and let us know in the comments down below if you have any interviews coming up and what stations you'd like us to cover in future videos. Also just to point out we are currently running a virtual mock MMI if you would like to have the really valuable opportunity to practice and engage with a mock MMI interview do click the link in the description box below and check out the courses we have available to you. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in next week's video. Bye!